What's up, I'm Troubleshoot. You've heard of Path of Exile 2, but have you heard of Craft to Exile 2? This is an absolutely massive mod pack with a ton of quests and even a hilariously massive talent tree similar to the actual Path of Exile 2. If you clicked this video, you're interested in playing this and progressing through it with your friends, and that's exactly what I'll be showing you here. Before we get into it though, this video was sponsored by Apex Hosting. If you're looking to host a Minecraft server that runs 24 seven with fantastic customer support, super low latency, DDoS protection, and automatic backups, then I'd highly recommend you check out Apex Hosting. Click the first link in the description down below. Check the top right for the current discount code. Currently it's Apex 25 for 25% off your first invoice. Click the get started button and select Java, Bedrock, or any other game for that matter. Configure your server, and as soon as you're happy, order now and get going in no time. A huge thank you to Apex Hosting for sponsoring this guide. So if you're looking to host a Craft to Exile 2 server with more than just open to LAN, this video is for you. First of all, we'll need to download the actual server files. You can do this either through the CurseForge page linked down below or the CurseForge app. Simply head across to Craft of Exile 2. Then over here, simply look for, down over here, the latest server pack. Click this, then choose download, or preferably inside of your CurseForge app, head to Minecraft, followed by Craft of Exile 2, expand it, and click this button over here to download the latest server pack. You can head to the versions tab and download a particular server pack if you wish, again just clicking that button. Once you do this, your browser will open and start downloading a zip. Take this roughly 800 meg zip and extract these files into a folder where you're going to be hosting the server. For me, I'll make a new folder on my desktop simply called COE2. Good enough. I'll open this folder, then extract everything from the zip into here, and once it's done, delete the zip. There we go. Once you've extracted everything, all we need to do is use run.bat on Windows or run.sh on Linux or Mac. I'll simply just double click run.bat. And if you see something like this, it simply means that you don't have Java 17 installed. So in the description down below, you'll find a link to download the Java 17 SDK. Scroll down and choose the Windows 64 installer here. Open it once it's done downloading and just click through the installer as usual. Once it's installed, close, close your browser, and you should be able to use run.bat once more. If you're still having issues, then you'll need to open the run.bat file inside of any text editor like Notepad, and you'll see something like this. What you need to do is change right over here where it says Java to the path of your actual Java installation. Open a new file browser and head across to C, followed by program files, then Java, JDK 17, bin, and then inside of here, you should find java.exe. Simply copy the folder path by right-clicking up here and choosing copy address. Then right before Java, we'll paste this in and add a backslash between bin and Java. So it's C program files, Java, JDK 17, bin, java.exe as such. Surround this in double quotes like this. You'll find this down in the description below. Just make sure your path is correct. Then save this file and close it. Now, just a quick note. If you don't have a ton of RAM in your system or you plan to play the game alongside hosting your server, check your server folder and find the user jvmargs.txt file. Open this with Notepad and inside of here, you're able to change how much RAM your server is able to use. XMS stands for the starting or minimum amount of RAM and XMX stands for the maximum amount of RAM your server can use. If you have, say, 16 gigs of RAM in your system, your game's probably going to take eight of those plus Windows and a bit more. If that's you, you're probably only able to give the game about four gigs of RAM. As you can see, it's trying to give it eight gigs of RAM. All you need to do is remove 8192M and instead replace it with four capital G for your XMX maximum and remove it again once more for XMS, your minimum, and set it to 4G. Now, our server is only allowed to use up to and including four gigabytes of RAM. You can check your task manager with control shift and escape and on the performance tab followed by memory, you'll see how much RAM is currently in use at the bottom, how much is available and how much you have in total. I have a ludicrous amount, so it's definitely not gonna be an issue. But for you, of course, if you're planning on gaming on the system as well, make sure to leave appropriate RAM for that too. If you're hosting this on a separate computer with more than enough RAM, raise these and your server should perform even better. Use run.com 
bad once more, and this time your server should happily start up. Fantastic. This first startup is going to take quite a bit of time as it's generating the world and a couple of things in it, but soon we should be able to join our brand new Minecraft server. Once your server's started up, head into your Minecraft client, multiplayer, add server and use the server address 127.0.0.1 or a local host. Choose done and now you should see your own servers online. Join the server, you'll see some movement in the console as you're joining and shortly after you'll be dropped into your brand new Craft of Exile 2 server. Fantastic. If you'd like to give yourself op to change game mode, simply tab into your console and use op space your username, hit enter and just like that you can start running commands in game. So slash game mode creative for example, allows us to fly around, spawn in items, etc. Pretty cool. But at this point it's only us playing on our server and nobody else is able to join. How exactly do we fix this? Well, there's a few steps. First of all, we'll need to handle our firewall and second of all, we'll need to port forward, but it's not as scary as it sounds. Let's start off with our Windows firewall by allowing our Minecraft server through to access our local network. So someone sitting next to us is able to join our server. This is the first step. In the description down below, you'll find a link that takes you to my blog page where scrolling down, you'll find this colorful block over here letting other people connect. These commands over here allow you to very easily open port 25565 in your Windows firewall in and out for both TCP and UDP. These commands are the simplest way of allowing your Minecraft server through your Windows firewall. Simply choose the copy button up here, then hit start, type in PowerShell and run PowerShell as admin. Don't know why my start menu's up here, but there you go. Inside of here, simply hit Control V to paste, then hit enter a few times to make sure these commands run. And once those commands have run, we'll need to run one more important command. Use the command IP config and then hit enter. This shows you all of the different ways you're connected to networks. Look for how you're connected to the internet, in my case, Ethernet adapter Ethernet, and find the IPv4 address. This address over here, 192.168.150 in my case, is my computer's local IP. With someone connected to the same router or network as me, they'd use this IP to connect to my Minecraft server. Fantastic. As our server is allowed through our Windows firewall, people should be able to join it as long as they're on the same network or router. But of course, if you have an antivirus with a built-in firewall or a separate firewall program, you'll need to make sure to allow port 25565 through that as well. Once you've done that, we can allow people over the internet to join our server. This requires port forwarding, but it's not really as difficult as it sounds. What you need to do is log into your router, then head across to advanced security port forwarding or something along those lines. You'll either end up on port forwarding, application forwarding, or something similar to it. Here, you should be able to enter a port coming in, a port going out, a protocol, and a local IP address. Starting off at the very top, an inbound, an outbound, in a route, internal, external port, these will need to be set to port 25565 for both in and out. If you're required to enter a range like I am, I'll do that by simply just copying the same numbers into both of these as we're just forwarding this one port. Then for the protocol, choose TCP and UDP if you have this combined option. Otherwise, add it once for TCP, then add it again for UDP. Then your local IP address we found previously with the IP config command. Again, PowerShell command prompt or anything like that using the command IP config. Find the way you're connected to the internet, in my case Ethernet, 192.168.150 is my IPv4 address. As we only need to enter the last few digits, as the rest of it is pre-populated in my case, I'll just enter 50 here. For you, you may be required to type out the entire thing or less. Then simply add it, click the plus or something along those lines, and now you successfully port forwarded port 25565 and people of the internet should be able to join your Minecraft server. Fantastic. This is just an example router. Yours will look slightly differently and you may need to look into guides for your particular router model and type. That being said, even if you've port forwarded and made sure your firewall is open, people over the internet may still not be able to join you. This is simply because oftentimes ISPs lock the ability to port forward and all it takes is just a simple call where things are usually unlocked for free and you're able to port forward anything you wish, host websites, or in our case, a Minecraft server. Close your browser, close command prompt, and at this point you're able to reconnect to your server, 
And of course, other people are able to play with you as well. That being said, instead of giving them your local IP address, you'll need to Google what is my IP and give them that instead. That's the address they'll use to join your Minecraft server. In the future, when you're looking to save and close your server inside of your console, use the command save hyphen all as such, hit enter, and this will save the world, your character, inventories, etc., so that you're able to safely bring your server to a close. In order to stop your server and close it, use the command stop. By typing this, it'll gracefully bring your server to a close and shut it down. That's it. In the future, when you're willing to host your server again, simply just head back to your server folder and use run.bat once more. It's that simple. But that's it. You now know how to set up your own Craft of Exile 2 server. And of course, you and your friends are able to progress through the game and its massive talent tree, tons of skills, quests, and more. Hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you again to Apex Hosting for sponsoring this guide. Link down below. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.